what do you what do you make of Harden doing everything he's done the last week? Okay, this is what I make of the Harden thing. It, this is why I love this so much, right? These are two guys, Daryl Har- I mean Daryl Morey and James Harden, who know each other very well, and importantly, owe their successes to the other. Correct. Both of them. Neither of them have all the money they got. Neither of them have all the prestige they have. If not for the fact that they came across each other in the year 2012. So that the year Harden and Maury came together is actually the same year you and I met in person. Yes. The, I was living in Houston. R- before he traded for James Harden, Daryl's biggest moves in Houston were Jeremy Lin and Omer Ashik. And it was known because he structured Ashik's contract in such a unique way. <laughs> yes. And I always thought he was sharp. I always liked Daryl. But he had no nothing to show for what I thought was a brilliant basketball mind. And then he trades for Harden. And I remember going on the radio in Houston. Because it happened in October. It was a right late... Right before the season. Right Sorry. before the season. And I said... I think James Harden can, by the end of this year, be one of the top 10 guys in the league. Like, fringe top 10. And in Houston, it was universally accepted as that is crazy. Like, what Daryl saw that Harden could be and what Harden could become under his system was... We now look back on it and people are like, oh, obvious. It was not obvious. No. It was not obvious at all. And so to you, you and obviously for Daryl, Daryl probably was without that trade going to be out of a job and then not be Daryl Morey. So I'm I'm just a- agreeing with you entirely that those two guys coming together is what turned Daryl Morey into one of the moment he leaves Houston, he's the, one of the highest paid GMs in Philly, and Harden into one of the most statistically decorated players yeah. in NBA history. And he's nearly made a billion dollars yes. between basketball and Adidas. Yes, like correct. I would not be surprised if somebody added up all the James Harden money at this point and it stacked up to a billion dollars for a man who doesn't have a personality. But anyway, yep. it was one of the most prescient trades ever, though, but not just from the Rockets' side, but also from the Thunder side because the Thunder got killed. Basically, all they got was Kevin Martin, Jeremy Lamb, and cap space when Kevin Martin's deal expired. And the pick that turned into Steven Adams, which ended up being the best piece of the whole thing. Right, very important, right? But it was prescient for Oklahoma City in a way that people didn't realize at the time because Presti understood something that none of these people who've dealt with Harden understood since, which was, we got to get him out of here. Like before the season starts. You think so? You think that's what you think that he was already showing this? I think he knew. Okay. This is somewhat informed. Not enough for me to say out loud. Got it. Okay. He knew we got to get this dude out of here. I knew they had to get him out of here just because that's the nature of things, right? He wasn't going to be no six man. Right. And still won his money. They had to get him out of here. So. Maury saw something in Harden that nobody else saw. Nobody saw. And Presti also saw something in Harden that nobody else had seen yet. So you fast forward to now, and Harden, whatever lie he feels like he was told, it may have been a couple of lies, but whatever lie he felt like he was told, he felt like he was told. Daryl Morey, on the other hand, felt like, I'm not giving James Harden away, right? Both of them knew that's how the other acts, right? Everybody knows James Harden's going to act up when it's time for him to go if you won't let him go. And everybody knows that Daryl Morey is not getting beat in a trade. No. But each of them looked at the other and said the same thing. Like I see it like a movie where you imagine they show one person talking and then they show the other person talking about the same thing and then it comes together at the end and they both are saying the same line and that line is, but I know he ain't going to do me like that. Not after everything I did for him. Oh, that's And here we are. Here we are. They both thought the other would not be the person that they were because he wouldn't do me like that. The, so... So much of this is fascinating to me. I want to talk on the lie part first, okay? So Harden, and I don't think it is, I I think it should be mentioned, and I understand Harden has a massive economy in China that (laughs) that's his really his only fan base left is China. But it also should be noted, so I, and he has events there. Him torching Mori. In China. Yes. When, if you remember, Daryl's tweet 
supporting Hong Kong. Yes. It was something that almost, it, it seemed like might cost Daryl his career. I mean, he messed every, he, he cost the NBA about as much money as COVID. Yeah, correct. That's not an exaggeration. The, or at least that's what people say. Yeah. And, the, you'd be, and so there's that kind of undertone to it. Then there is, what is he saying you lied about? Because if he's saying you lied about you're going to trade me and you're not trading me, there is no problem. If he is saying what I think he wanted people to believe he was saying, you told me last year when I gave back the $14 million that there was a max deal waiting for me, like everyone speculated, and to be fair, like the NBA did launch an investigation last year about, found no, that it was not true, and then the Rockets or the Sixers got docked for early contact with PJ and House, the guys they were able to get with the money yes. from the Harden thing. If that were true, it would be catastrophic for the Philadelphia 76ers, for Daryl Morey, for everybody. I do not believe that's true. I do not believe Daryl and the NBA doesn't believe it, and now Harden is saying he didn't do it. But I know some people do believe that that's what happened here. There was a handshake deal. So let me ask this question to you, because I don't think this point's been made enough. Bill Simmons, to his credit, uh, tweeted about it when the story first broke. I, he and I are in somewhat lockstep about it. But, well, I shouldn't say we're in lockstep because I'm not going to say exactly, I don't want to say what Bill believes. But let's just say for a moment they did have a handshake deal. If you're on, and people are like, oh, well, if that's the case, Daryl, you know, broke his word. If I'm on the side of, okay, take less money, you got a max contract waiting for you. Once you make clear to every NBA reporter in the world, you plan to go to Houston this offseason, do I have right to say, well, I guess the <laughs> deal's off. Do I have every right to say whatever handshake deal we had, if you are from Christmas Day through May telling everyone that'll listen, you're going to Houston, am I still supposed to then be like, well, if they don't want you, I've got you? Or does that nix whatever deal we had? Because I would, again, I don't think there was a deal. But if there was, and I was in the Sixers case, I would be like, well, I guess he doesn't think there's a deal, so I guess we're off the hook. Isn't that legitimate? I think it would be legitimate, but I absolutely believe that there was a deal. And the reason that I believe that there was a deal is nothing about James Harden implies, hey, I think he's willing to make some some sacrifices to win because I do think he wants to win very badly. I think that the poor behavior that he's demonstrated in all these moves lately, those weren't about money, right? If he wanted the money, he could have stayed in Houston. Fertitta would have given him $50 million a year for two more. And they and in Brooklyn, remember, he turned down three for 161 right. before the second season there. Right. James Harden would be one of the greatest players of all time unequivocally with a championship. And I think he wants that. Like, he does not... There's a rarefied air that we don't talk about him Also, yet. I think how badly he wants to win is evidenced by how much the playoffs get to him. Yes. I think he gets nerd. Yes. I think I, I do think that is true. I do think he wants it so badly that it then manifests itself in fear yeah. during postseason games. Yeah. Go I mean, ahead. We, we saw that to a degree with Jimmy Butler in the finals where it's like, oh, what's wrong with Jimmy Butler? Is he hurt? No, he's pressing, yeah. right? Like, these things happen. I think he wants to win. Do I think he wants to win enough to give back $13 million and then everything else that came behind it? No, I don't. I don't think that man is wired like that. I think for whatever reason, he thought he was going to be taken care of. Now, I do think you make an interesting point there that if he then says, well, I'm going to go to Houston, but Daryl knows James. James knows. His number one weapon in negotiation is pain. I got to make these people feel pain in yeah. order to get what I want. So if I'm Daryl, I'm like, no, I'm probably still going to give this to you because in the end, if they had given it to him, I think James would have taken it because James wants to win and James was not going to go to what that clown show was looking like at the time in Houston. That That's my thought on it. But somewhere along the way, after he gave back the money and everything else, whether Daryl Morey was going to get a good deal on that trade or not, you had to take care of the dude, man. Well... Here's the thing. And it's your guy. I think that's the other part, too. It is your, your guy. It is your guy, but also, the. I mean, what I would argue, I would argue that Harden, over the last week, has mishandled this immensely. Yes. Do you think Damian Lillard is going to be on the Blazers this year? Yes. Oh, okay. 
All right, well, I wasn't even trying to have a Dame conversation. I don't, but the reason I bring it up is he hasn't been traded yet, and I think that it is fair, even if you disagree, a lot of people think, but he will be at some point. Yeah. Yeah, I think at some point he'll be traded, but I think he'll be a Blazer. Okay, oh, you think he'll start a Blazer yes. and then be traded. So that's kind of my point is Harden... To me, those comments harden. If you're gonna if you're gonna play that card, you almost got to play it either days before the season starts or days before the trade deadline. But pulling that parachute when there is still plenty, we're in August, yeah. seems premature and seems hasty. Hey, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button to get more from the show, and make sure to click the bell to get notified every time new content drops. Check out full episodes of What's Right wherever you get your podcasts or just click the link in the description below.